Wii Sports, the most sold game ever on the Wii. Probably because it came with the Wii, but nobody seems to care about that. If you were a kid in the 2000s like me, you probably remember this game as being really fun. And if you were a dumb kid like me, you also thought that the Wii Motion was actually dragging your movements. Which it didn't, but that's a whole other story. Wii Sports itself is not a bad game by any means, but in my opinion it's nothing more than a really polished tech demo. But you know what game was pretty damn good? Wii Sports Resort. And that's why I'm here today. I'm gonna try to make a game inspired by one of the best Wii Sports Resorts minigames and I'll make it work by using this crappy webcam here for the motion tracking. So stick around if you wanna see how I build this shit. Wii Sports Resort use accelerometers and gyroscopes to track your movements. I have a 3-axis accelerometer and gyroscope here from the time I made this shitty controller, but I want to make something playable even if you don't have any of those components. So I have another idea. I've been working with a lot of computer vision lately in my projects and I asked myself, why are there so few games that use cameras as input devices? And I don't mean games from large companies like the Kinect Games or PS Move Games, there's plenty of those games, I'm talking more about indie games. The answer might be because computer vision is kind of wacky unless you have a good amount of resources and you usually need good timing in video games, so merging those two things together should be pretty stressful for someone with no experience like me. But I wanted to test it anyway, so I set myself the goal of making a game that would remind me of my childhood. The first thing to do was to decide which Wii Sports minigame I was gonna make. I wasn't really sure about it, but after thinking for a while, I still wasn't sure, so I hopped into Unity and created a new project. And yes, I call it the weird boxing game I'm about to create, as you might have noticed, and that's because my original idea was to make the Wii Sports Vanilla's boxing game. And I'll tell you why I didn't. In a minute. First, I needed to cover the motion tracking part. So I used this script that lets me drag rigid bodies around using my mouse. Now this is pretty fine and everything, but I need motion tracking. And this is clearly not motion tracking. I guess you can argue that I'm moving the mouse, and therefore, this is tracking my hand movement. But no, moving the mouse is for normies. I don't want to play with my hands, I want to play with my camera. Using my hands. So I used OpenCV. If you don't know what OpenCV is, it's probably just the most popular computer vision library out there. And you can use it in a ton of different programming languages like Python, C++, Java. I decided to use C++ mainly because I really like C++. So I created this simple program to test my camera, but I couldn't manage to make it recognize my camera for some reason. Okay, fuck C++, let's go with Python. And guess what, Python don't want to recognize my camera either. I guess I'm stuck with C-Sharp. I should mention that I'm using this PS3 I here from an old PS3. It works as a normal 48p webcam, but it might have some troubles with the drivers from what I read. Sadly, it's the only webcam I have, and I'm not planning to buy another one soon. Fast forward a little bit, and I built this simple Windows Form application that uses PengaCV, which is the .NET wrapper of OpenCV, to track my hand movements. You probably have two questions now. One, why didn't I build everything inside the Unity project since I'm using C Sharp? And two, why didn't I use Unity's plugin for OpenCV? And those are really bad questions, so let me tell you why they suck. I built this separately so that it allows me to change things easier if something's not working, which, as you might guess, happens a lot. And I really like to stress myself out by writing my own code, so that's pretty much why. I think that this might be kind of boring to some people, and I totally get that, but this is the last time I'm gonna talk about the motion tracking part, and then I'm gonna jump right into making the game, so stick around a few seconds more while I explain how the motion tracking works. Or you can skip this part, I guess, but don't do that. Object detection may sound scary to some people. At least it sounded really scary for me when I first started learning this. So let me walk you through my awesome algorithm. To make the object detection, I basically just apply a color mask to whatever the camera is capturing, and then I apply some blur to smooth things out, and that's pretty much it. It's really simple, it's the most Neanderthal way of doing motion tracking, what were you expecting? There is only one thing left now, and that's sending the data from the tracking application to the game. Since those two are completely different apps, I need to use a communication protocol to send and receive information between them. So I have to use UDP. Do I know what that is? Of course I don't. I dropped my computer network in class at college. Jokes aside, I made a multiplayer game in the past, but I still don't understand everything that was going on there. So after doing some research and studying a couple of tutorials from this Chinese guy, thank you awesome Chinese guy, I finally have everything working. So in the computer vision app, I process the image and using another thread I send the information via UDP. 
Then in the unit project, I used a new thread to receive the data and parse it. It is very important to use multiple threads while doing this because if you don't do that, the game will run really slowly. My first plan was to make the boxing game from Wii Sports Vanilla, but I finally decanted on the sword fighting game instead. Because I'm a huge weeb, and I like sword fighting games. Not gonna lie, this was actually pretty hard because I wasn't sure how to approach this, but I knew I wanted to make use of Unity's physics, because that way I could be lazy and let the physics do all the work for me. So this is how you make a motion dragon sword. First, you attach two rigid bodies to a fixed joint, you have to position them very carefully, and then you use the drag rigid body script that I talked about before and voila! We have a sword. Kinda. I know it looks really bad, so let me fix that. <laughs> And here we have a sword. I think in the original game the player had a shinai, but making a wooden sword or a bokto was way easier, and I'm not really good at 3D molding, so I made this. It's pretty decent. I wanted to move while using this sword, but I couldn't manage to make it work, so instead of solving the problem, I just completely discarded the idea of moving. It was easier. Then I found a surprisingly good tutorial by TVT about slicing meshes. I really recommend it, so go check that out if you want to know how to make that. And also I implemented a cannon to shoot cubes. And here is everything working so far. You might think that that was a lot of progress, but at that point it was two weeks since I started this project, and I wasn't seeing any progress. I thought that making the motion dragon part was gonna be the hardest part, but making the game was way harder than I expected and not because of the actual difficulty of the game, but because I didn't really know what I wanted to do with this game. I was in a deep state of, I don't know what to do, therefore I'm gonna do nothing. And so I did. I did nothing. I was not feeling rest. I was not feeling good. I definitely wasn't feeling positive at all about this project. But I had a few days off at work, and I knew I had to use them well. So I moved everything to a new project, did a lot of refactoring, and started working on the graphics a bit. You know, one of the best things about the Wii Sports Resort is how alive the Wuhu Island feels. I'm not planning to build the entire island, because that sounds fucking time consuming, but I need to at least make it slightly similar. And by slightly similar, I mean making everything look fucking horrible because of course I suck at design. Have you seen my banner? So I put together an ocean shader from a YouTube tutorial, a couple of small cliffs, a crappy volcano, some particles, a shining sun, and of course, the iconic dual platform. I also needed to spice up the gameplay a bit. In Wii Sports Resort, you have three sword gameplays. The showdown, which I didn't want to do because it looks painful to put together. The duel, which is my favorite, but it requires AI and I want to save that for another time. The slice one, which is honestly fun, but not that much. So I wanted to make a mix between the duel minigame and the slice minigame, where the objective is to stay on the platform while the cannon shoots projectiles at you. So I made three types of projectiles. One sliceable, one non-sliceable, and a bomb. The sliceable projectile pushes you out of the ring, so you have to be able to slice it before getting pushed all the way. I also added this cool dissolving shader for when it starts to disappear and it looks so fucking nice. The non-sliceable one is pretty similar to the sliceable one, but you can't slice it. And you have to be very careful because if you hit it bad then you still get pushed. And finally, the bomb. It doesn't do anything if it touches you, but if you slice it, it explodes. And you're blown away by it. Like with this video. I think they turn out pretty cool and they will be pretty helpful when implementing the gameplay. Talking about the gameplay, this ugly sphere that is supposed to be the cannon needs to go, so I replaced it with this other ugly sphere here. Much better. I didn't want to make the projectiles spawn randomly, so to be able to arrange the levels the way I wanted, I did the following. I created this enum that stores the type of the projectile, and this class that stores the data of the projectile. That means the force at which spawns, the time interval that it takes to spawn, and the type of the projectile. That way, I can arrange all the projectiles that I want to spawn in this list. And at the start of the level, I put all that list into a queue. Then, using a simple timer, I can just dequeue the first item and spawn the projectile that I need at the correct interval. Is this efficient? I don't know, and I don't care. 
it gets the job done, so I'm happy with it. I also added a script that allows me to manage multiple cannons, so you can have more fun with more cannons, I guess. I was finally feeling more confident about this. I did all that in just 3 days, which felt really nice because it took me forever to make the first part. Anyway, I was seeing real progress here. And I was happy. Or that's until I encountered myself with sound design. So I really rushed the sound design part. The Wii Sports Resort sound design is pretty iconic in my opinion. There's no way I would be able to make that, at least not with my current skills, or time, or with my current motivation, so I used a bunch of random sounds from the internet, a couple of sounds from one of GDC's pack, and two or three sounds from the Wii Sports Resort game. Then I spiced things up a bit again with some house models, more particles, camera shake, and some other nice stuff. And also I implemented slow motion because... Slow motion is cool, I guess. I know I haven't talked that much about the code, and that's because my code is really simple and I can't think of anything worth mentioning besides the thing that I've already mentioned. So if you're interested in knowing something, just tell me. My code became a real spaghetti towards the end, but I could make a tutorial or something. As I said, my code is quite simple, and that's because most of the complex stuff is taken care of by the physics engine. So every time I get pushed, it's just the physics working. Every time I fail the platform, it's the physics. And every time something weird happens and I don't have any idea why, it's the physics too. And that's pretty cool, because it means that I had less work to do. And you can complain about the gameplay because it's totally accurate. And I think that's it. Everything is looking fine for now. I spent a couple of hours working on a menu, so all that is left is to make the levels. But before that, let me explain the basic gameplay for now. You have to stay on the platform. If you fail, you lose. If you manage to slice or dodge all the projectiles, then you win. I honestly don't know why I needed to explain that, it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I made 6 levels for this game and they turned out pretty decent. And now, it's time to test this shit. Yeah, I almost forgot to mention two things. The first, as you might have noticed, is that I blatantly copied the title from Wii Sports Resort. Since this is a party game, I don't really care that much about it. And the second is that this game doesn't have music because of reasons. So I just used a sound that I found from the ocean. And that's what you will be hearing through the video. I hope you enjoy it! Okay, so in order to test this, first I need to open the app and press this button. Now I have to adjust the hue, saturation and value until it detects the object that I have in my hand. It works better if the object is spherical and monochromatic, and if you're using synthetic lights. Now I press the send data button and start the game. The game should be receiving the coordinates of the camera automatically, and we can check that by accessing this menu. That means it works. Everything seems to be working, but there's one thing to do before playing. You see, this game is about swords, and I don't have a sword. So let's make one. Yeah, it looks good. I bet you can tell if I'm wielding a real sword or not. Okay, so I'm gonna be showing you random clips from the game, because this is my first time actually testing the game. And the level design is kind of wuggy, so it needs a little bit more of playtesting before making this game available to download for free on itch.io. So I'll be updating the description to let you know when that happens. Anyway, 
I really enjoy working on this project, it was a ton of fun, but it was really time consuming too. And I'm done with this project, I just want to finish this video because I'm really tired and I want to sleep. But don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, share it, and do whatever you want. Oh, comment too. And I'll see you next time. You can go now. This is the end of the video.